Hi YouTube, I'm Iman, and welcome back to one of my product review videos. In this video, I will be reviewing the storage cabinet by Seville Classic. The reason that we got the storage cabinet is because we're doing cook cooking videos right over here, and we don't want to mix our pots and pans with my mom's pot and pans, so we want to store them here. Uh, usually, probably in the winter. And maybe sometime in the future, when we're not doing cooking videos anymore, my dad might want to use this in the garage. It's also better because it has wheels too. He's been searching for this for a long time with, uh, with to no avail, but he finally failed, found his holy grail. <laughs> Alright, so before I open it, I want to just talk about it for a few minutes. So, as for outdoor cabinets, there's not really that many options. Uh, however, you could, I mean, you could get Rubbermaid cabinets, uh, however, my dad wanted one with wheels, and so one of the many features of this, uh, storage cabinet, it's Seville Classics Ultra HD Commercial Heavy Duty Storage Cabinet, has many, many applications, the garage, home, office, uh, work center, as you can see, there are many environments which this could be placed in, it's stainless steel, uh, has a loading capacity of 600 pounds, so that's good, has four shells, three of them are adjustable. Has corner bumpers so that it doesn't get scratched. Has ultra heavy duty wheels, that's an important one. Uh, has a good lock. Also has power coated steel body to prevent rust. Uh, my dad would have wanted five shells, but it's all right. All right then, let's open it up and see what's inside. Uh, and if we have time, we may show you the assembly. It should be really easy. So unpacking is just like any other appliance. However, I wouldn't recommend putting it on a hard surface, like like the ground. You probably want to put it somewhere like a soft moving blanket, like we are. So because this material is really flimsy. All right. So I'm gonna start reading the instructions, and then we're gonna get started assembling. Alright, so the assembly and the parts are very user friendly. As you can see, they have labels on them that tell you what part they are. So this says that it's left side upper panel. Uh, this direction is the front and this is the top side. It also has the side panel reinforcement connection. They tell you what part it is, 1A3. This is the left side bottom panel, so already very user friendly. And if you see, there are two screw holes here. And there are two screw holes here. There are three screw holes here and three screw ho uh, holes there. So that means it goes like this, right? Okay. I'll talk. I'll, I'll assemble it later. A uh, good thing is that they gave us a screwdriver, and not only that, it's magnetic. So that's good. As for these three screw holes right here, we're going to be using the 42 screws, and for the four screw holes right here, we're going to be using the number 41 screws. All right. So I'll open them up. Make sure you don't lose the screws. <laughs> All right. Take three of the longer ones. Set them aside right here. And four of the shorter ones. First, you want to put this on, make sure it's flush. And then you want to put your screw in the center, make sure it goes in the hole. Make sure it's aligned correctly. Alright, then screw it in to secure it. Alright, so as you see all the uh, screws are in the holes, so now I'm just going to tighten it, and then we'll move on to the next panel. Alright, so now is the right side panel, and it goes the same as the left side panel. So I just screw it in. Oh, I also want to mention that these moving blankets, they're uh, very cheap, they're from Harbor Freight Tools, they're $5.99, and very convenient as well, for assemblies like this. 
Alright, so I learned that the top screw should go first. Make sure it's flush. Screw it in. Alright, so next is the door. So you want to take a 41 screw and you want to put it into the this little hole here. I'm not sure if you can see it. And you want to make sure you screw it in with your hands first before you actually screw your screwdriver. Oh, it's not aligned. I gotta line it first. Alright, so just screw it before. I can't tell if I'm actually screwing it. Alright, so next we have the connection, uh, as you see here, 6A3. So you want to line it up so that the, the wall is facing this side. And you want to take four 41 screws. And you want to uh, screw them in by hand on top. You can also come back later and put screw, uh, you can screw the driver in. Alright, so for the outside holes, these ones, it uses a different screw. It uses the number 52 screw. So, be wary of that. Alright. You only need four of them. And it's a good thing because there are only eight of the 52 screws. So that means four for each door. You want to take them from the outside. Oh, a uh, good trick is to use the magnet on your screwdriver and just align it instead. Screw it in just a bit. Then you can do it with the other ones. Hello, kitty. all coming together. I'll make sure you don't step on this. It's quite flimsy and fragile, uh, so you don't uh, bend it. And now that all the screws are in, you can finally secure them all with the screwdriver. So next is the right door. Uh, as you can see, we have the right panels. We also have the connector. It's kind of like the left side door, but it has the uh, key piece. So as for screws, it's the same. First, we take a S screw and we put it we put it into the hole on this side. So the so the hole's over there. So we can insert it. Make sure that uh, it's actually in the hole, and make sure that it's aligning. Just screw it in. Uh, you don't want to tighten it too much because you can always retighten it later. That's what the instructions say. Alright, so next we take the bracket and we line it up. So the part of the wall goes on this side. We take the F screws and we put it on the top. We put them before and then we can screw them in later once all the screws are in. Alright, so next, you want to take this long rod, you want to put it into a tab here. You want to take your screwdriver and unscrew this part that's already been screwed in. Then you want to line it up. Make sure the screw is in there. And then screw it in. I'm a doofus. If you look at this one, it's actually on top. Don't put it on the bottom. Then you can actually screw it in correctly. Alright. And then on to the next step. Alright, so next is putting on the top panel. 
So as you can see, there are three screw holes here and screw holes here. So since I don't have any help right now, I'm going to put one screw in, so in the middle, and and I'm gonna get help to uh, put this up. So you wanna make sure it's flush. The top part is on, is above it. Okay, so this is the right side panel. That's the left side panel. And then you can put, you make sure it's flush, right? Then you can put your screw in. And if you're looking from this angle, it's actually pretty easy to find. Alright, so next is the left panel. We're still going to use 41 screws for this. I mean, number 41 screws for this. So you want to make sure that on the label, the top is up here and the front is right there. So when you look at the label, the directions should all be facing the same way. I'm going to add a bit more space. You also want to make sure that your cabinets are facing the right way because I was building a bookshelf once and that didn't work out right when I didn't make sure that the holes were in the right place. Alright, so I'm going to do it the same way as I did last time. I'm going to put one hole in and I'm going to put the other, three, uh, other two in to secure it. does get stuck in a hole you can always use the magnetic screwdriver to pluck it out that's what I did last time because it fell in the panel all right so now that all three screws are in we can now secure it with the screwdriver all right so next is the bottom panel and the bottom panel is a bit different in the sense that we use uh, number 42 screws they're the longer ones instead of the number 41. All right, so this bottom panel should be in the exact same orientation as that one. It should have the front facing downwards and the left facing to, to the right. <laughs> uh, excuse me. So on this one, the left is facing in the same direction and the front is in the same direction. So that means we're good. Are you okay? So, you want to take your screw, you want to secure it in one side. Make sure they're aligned first. Alright, so it's in the hole. And then we can put it on the other side so that we can secure the other side as well. Screw that in. Just uh, preliminary. Then you can screw the other two in. And then after you screw them in with your hand, then you can go back with a screwdriver and retighten all of them. Which is what we're gonna do. Now tighten them. Flush. Don't do it too tight. You want to strip it. All right. So next is uh, putting on the back panels. Uh, I also want to mention that if you're going to tighten them, you should just leave it a bit loose so that once it's fully assembled, you can always uh, readjust the screws to get the right uh, flushness. All right, so first we're gonna put the bottom back panel on, as you can see. So the top is facing that way, so I'm gonna flat it out. And according to the instructions, you need nine of, no, seven of the number 41 pieces. So first I'll take the screws. and get them prepared. All right, so there are seven screw holes that should match up. One here, one here, one here, two here, two here, okay.
guys. So, let's just take a step back here and look at the uh, cabinet. Uh, it looks like we spent a few minutes doing the wrong thing. So, as you can see, it pops out. Uh, I think it's supposed to be the reverse. I think the place that it goes, it juts out, is supposed to be inwards. And now that I look at the instructions, uh, you can see, if you look closely, there are supposed to be screw holes on the outside. And when we looked under, we saw that there are screw holes on the inside. So now we can reverse it. It actually does make a big deal. Uh, because why else would there be uh, glues on the inside? If we look at uh, this side right here, uh, uh, we actually hammered it, but it, so it looks like that we were actually not supposed to because if we put it the other way, then it would have looked just fine and we, didn't, we wouldn't have to hammer it. Uh, so I guess we can spend a few minutes reversing this. So we have all the screws off and all the panels off. So now that we look at it, you can see that this groove here actually reinforces it when you put it in. So top of it here because when you put it in, it mates perfectly and you can also see the screw holes too. And then we can put the other two panels on. So, they designed this uh, perfectly, the instructions were clear. It's just that I, I didn't read it right and that I was also rushing. I also kind of interpret it because the, sticker, the stickers are on the inside. I thought the stickers for these ones would also be on the inside. It's not supposed to be like that. So, uh, lesson learned, uh, read your instructions more carefully. Alright, now this is the correct orientation to put the screws on. So my dad actually called it, ca uh, caught it because if you look at the edges, the milling, it's actually really straight. And uh, when we were hammering it down, we were, uh, we were like, huh? What is this happening? Why is this happening? And my dad has been doing this for a really long time and he didn't read the instructions and he caught it. I read the instructions though, so that tells you that uh, time makes you wiser. <laughs> Alright, take the screws and tighten it. Alright, so next is screwing in the wheels. So the wheels with the brake, they have a, a sort of um, lever here. So they go on the front, which means they go on the bottom, since this is the front. So you want to take the uh, screw D, they're a bit bulky, and you want to, we're going to align it and then put the screw in, just screw it a bit, and then you can put all, all of the other three. You just want to secure it, so that you can put the other three. And then later you can tighten it. Dad recommends that you do the top part first, the uh, top from your where you're facing. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. I think it's all right. Then you can tighten it. All right. So the in the instructions it says to uh, flip it all the, uh, to stand it up, as you can see. However, I think we can take a chance right now to put on two of the bumpers, the back bumpers, so that you don't have to bend down uh, twice to. Uh, put it on. So you need to use number 54 screws. And you're going to take um, you're going to take the screw. And you're going to fasten it just a bit. This is the where the screw holes here come in handy. It looks like the screw number is actually number 16. And if you do do this, then you can actually see that the 54 screw isn't that uh, isn't long enough to go through the bumper. So you can figure it out. So, insert the screw, and let's see if it lines up. Just put it in first, and then attach the other screws. And then you want to do it for the other side. Then after you uh, put it on the other side, you can tighten it and stand up. Stand it up. Oh, also, these wheels, they didn't lie about them being heavy duty. They are definitely heavy duty. Usually on wheels, you can see that they're rubber, but on wheels like these, they're actually, I want to say metal or plastic. 
Um, also, it's very tall, these wheels. So that means my cats can also hide under it if they want to get away from any, like, intruders. Alright, so we tilted it and stood it up. So we retighted all the screws. And if we look down here, uh, I'm not sure you can see it, but the screws actually made the metal cave in. So they were definitely right about not screwing it too much in. Uh, so if the company is watching this, I suggest that they add some kind of countersink to make sure that it doesn't cave in. I'm not sure if you can see it though. All right, so next we can add the the front of the the front side bumpers. So um, let me get the screws. And let's do it. Alright, so after the bottom protection goes the top protection and the middle protection. So first we're going to start with the top protection. So we're going to be using screw N, that is number 54, the one that I messed up with uh, below. I'm going to, well we can only put this one way. I'm going to secure it in with one screw at a time. And then after we put this, these screws, we can tighten it. After we put the top protection, then we can put the middle protection. The middle protection just looks like an L shape. Top is finished, now we're just going to put the middle brackets in, and it should be pretty simple, just put the screw in, uh, put all of them in, then tighten, just like all the other times before. Alright, so we put the middle brackets on, now we put on these magnets. There are a screw hole up here, and a screw hole down here, so I just got to separate it. We're using number 41 screws to tighten it, so two for each. Make sure, I gotta see if it's facing the right way. Okay, All right. this should be the right way. Woo, it sticks really well. It's hard to squeeze in due to its magnet. Just tighten it. Then the next one. Alright, so after the magnets, the comes the doors, and it's actually taller than me, so I'm embarrassed. Uh, so, basically, um, these door hinges right here, they already have uh, tolerance according to the instructions. It, this allows the door to be adjusted and centered in the door frame. So you want to place the top, middle, and bottom screws first. So, we're going to do this off camera because it requires two people, anyway. Uh, and it's a bit hard to film anyway. Alright, so we already did this right door, and it's pretty good. Now we have to do the next one. <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, we finished both doors. So next, in the final step, we put on the hooks for the shelves. So, it's ra rather simple, actually no uh, screws. So all you have to do is make sure that they're facing downwards, put, and then just put it into the hole easy as that then you put it for parallel for, to that so that you can put the shelves on them Let's see and then the shelves should be able to be put on how many hooks do we have we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so that means for each three shelves there are four hooks okay now we just have to find out what level we want them to be so we put two shelves on already, and as you can see, uh, they're, they're supported by the hooks, if you look closely. So, if you're putting on the bottom two, then you need to put them at an angle, but if you're putting them on the top, then it doesn't really have to be put at an angle. Actually, to, uh, put, to get it through the doors, you probably do, but once you put it down, not really. Right, so, this is the storage cabinet. <laughs> Alright, so now that we put the shelves on, I just want to talk about how great the 
company is for adding some mounting strips uh, to the wall. They also have the uh, these go in the wall to secure the this to the back. They also have extra. Wait, that's not the right one. They also have extra screws, but I can't find it. Yeah. But they do have extra screws, so that's great. It's a really good company. I would definitely recommend this. So you should get it. <laughs> Alright, so now that we close the doors, we can see that they gave us two keys. So if you lose one of them, you always have a backup. Uh, the insulation is very great. The engineering is very good. The assembly is straightforward. Uh, as you saw for a mistake back there, the engineering uh, actually helped to uh, keep the grooves in. That made the uh, it made it very sturdy. So we bought this from Sam's Club for around $200. Uh, you can get it from other places if you want. They also have a uh, mini selection of uh, storage cabinets. If you look at this picture. And <laughs> it feels like it's the sky is getting dark, so it's time to close. I'm Ayman, thanks for watching. Please like, rate, comment, subscribe, we've got other videos on I and Ayman. Especially the product review videos. Alright, uh, <laughs> Engineer Ayman signing out. Peace.